hydrangeas have been around in the garden for a long time. And while there are some that can be a little bit more finicky to grow, there are definitely some that are well suited for the traditional Oklahoma garden. Today we're going to take a look at a few of the different species of hydrangeas. To start us off, we're going to talk about Hydrangea macrophylla, also known as the big leaf hydrangea, is probably the one that is most well known and often desired. Many of them have the recognizable mop head flower that can range from pink to blue and is influenced by the pH of the soil. If you purchase a blue hydrangea macrophylla and plant it in the ground, it may still bloom pink. So don't think you accidentally picked up the wrong plant. Most often in Oklahoma soils, you'll find that the lilac to pink range is a result of our slightly acidic to alkaline soil. To get that blue hydrangea, you need to have a highly acidic soil. So you might consider planting them alongside your azaleas or blueberries where perhaps the soil has been amended. Also, you can try growing them in a container where it will be easier to adjust the pH. Adding aluminum sulfate will make the flowers bluer, while adding lime will make them pinker. And the soil needs to be amended well in advance of the flowering period, typically in late fall or early spring. Now the white macrophyllas will always be white regardless of the soil pH. And speaking of soil, most hydrangeas, especially the macrophylla, like a moist yet well-drained shady location. So you can see we've planted ours on the north side of one of our buildings and while we have some trees planted there that will eventually provide some shade, they're not quite giving them just enough relief just yet. So you can see we've got a little bit of scorching on some of our macrophyllas. But finding that north side or that microclimate is a good idea for those macrophyllas in order to give them an ideal condition. Now when it comes to pruning hydrangeas, sometimes that can be a question mark depending on those species. For macrophyllas, traditionally macrophyllas bloom on what is known as old wood or last year's growth. So if you lose that vegetation during the winter or you prune it back too late in the season, you're actually removing your flowers, which means you won't have them the following season. However, because of the new breeding that's been going on with a lot of the hydrangeas, there are now known as repeat blooming macrophyllas that bloom on old wood and new wood. So even if you lose last year's growth, you still will have some flowers that come and are produced on that new season. A couple of those reblooming cultivars to be looking out for are called Fusion Glow and Nantucket Blue. Now the next hydrangea we're going to look at is Hydrangea serrata, and it is very similar to Macrophylla, in fact so similar that it used to actually be classified as a variety of Macrophylla. However, now given its own species, um, you can see that there are some similarities, but the biggest one is that it is actually smaller in stature than the Macrophyllas. It also tends to be a little bit more cold hardy because it's native to the mountains of Japan. Now like Macrophylla, there are new reblooming cultivars out on the market that will bloom on both old wood and new wood. So this particular species and cultivar Tough Stuff actually looks great and is still blooming even when we had negative 10 degree temperatures this last winter. Now the big difference between the serrata and the macrophylla is also the flower. So typically with the macrophylla, we look for those large mop heads. Um, and so you can see here, one has kind of got a little transition between that blue and the pink color. Now with serrata, more of them are going to be this lace cap. You can get macrophyllas that are in lace cap as well. In fact, these are both macrophyllas. However, I just wanted to demonstrate and show you the difference between what is known as a mop head and a lace cap. So again, mop heads are these big floppy um, balls of clusters of flowers that are beautiful. Whereas the lace cap offer you a little bit more of a delicate look in your garden. They have these sterile flower florets that bloom around the edges um, that kind of encircle these fertile flowers. So these aren't going to be as showy, but they kind of give it that delicate lacy look. Also, you'll notice that this is a flat umbel shape as well. So this is the traditional flower that you'll find on serrata, whereas this is more the traditional flower that you'll find on macrophylla. Now, speaking of flowers, the next hydrangea, Hydrangea paniculata, offers a completely different flowering structure. As the species implies, it has a conical pointed panicle of flowers. 
It is popular and one of the most easiest hydrangeas to grow because it is more cold hardy all the way up to zone three and blooms on new wood. So you don't have to worry about it dying back and you can go in in late winter and cut out any of that old uh, stems and still get new flowers the following season. Also, it's tolerant of air pollution, so it does well in urban locations. Now, this particular cultivar called Quick Fire, what's really neat about it is it opens up pure white, but as those flowers age, you'll notice that they start to turn a little bit pink. So you'll get this blushing pink that finally ends up being more of a burgundy color later in the season. Now, all of those hydrangeas that we've mentioned previously are native to Japan and the Asian continent. However, if you're looking for something a little bit more native, we do have a couple of species that are native to the U.S. One behind me, in fact, is hydrangea arborescence. It's native all the way up from New York down to Florida and into eastern Oklahoma. So it's hardy from zones three all the way to zones nine. It is, um, and it prefers, like some of the other hydrangeas, a moist, well-drained, shady condition. However, it's a little bit more tolerant of some of those rougher soil conditions, as well as it can handle a little bit more sun if irrigated properly. Now, hydrangea arborescence is native. However, this particular cultivar behind me is called Annabelle. Annabelle actually was discovered near Anna, Illinois, and while it's a naturally found uh, variety, you can see what really makes it stand out is the flower that gets over 12 inches across. Now there are a couple of cultivars that have been uh, bred from Annabelle, such as Incredible and Invincible, that have a little bit sturdier stems to hold those flowers up. The last hydrangea that I want to take a look at today is Hydrangea corsifolia. And corsifolia, the species name is Greek for oak-like leaf. And you can see definitely how this leaf compares to some of the other hydrangeas. It definitely has an oak-shaped leaf. Now, in addition to that unique texture, you can't forget about these amazing flowers that you get that are sort of that panicle yet mop head look to them. So this particular uh, oak leaf hydrangea, traditionally they'll get to be about eight feet tall. Now one thing to keep in mind is they do bloom on the old wood. So you're going to want to prune these back as soon as they're done blooming. Also you might lose a little bit of that flower depending on the winter season and how low your temperatures get. Now while this traditional species can get up to eight feet tall. There are some cultivars on the market that are going to stay a little bit smaller, such as ruby slippers that only gets to be three to four feet tall. Now this was just a brief introduction into hydrangeas and some of the species that you might find on the market. To recap, all of the hydrangeas that we've mentioned do like a moist yet well-drained soil and especially prefer a little bit of shade from our Oklahoma summers. Now, if you're after that traditional blue colored hydrangea, make sure to look for hydrangea macrophylla. But keep in mind, just because you buy it and it's blue doesn't mean it will stay blue in your soil. It depends on the pH. Now, if macrophylla is a little bit too finicky for you, keep in mind there is also hydrangea paniculata, hydrangea arborescence, and hydrangea corsifolia that make a great addition to any Oklahoma garden. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.